You are here to implement a systematic approach to trading because that's what ultimately every successful trader does. They trade systems. They're sometimes in their head, not documented. Sometimes they're documented. Sometimes they're automated. But everybody is running systems. The proof is in the pudding. You have to limit yourself to initially just two things. And you have to do those two things and get good in implementing it to the point that eventually you feel you feel the confidence like I know for a certainty that nothing bad is going to happen to me, just like daylight, because there is a stop that will take care of those speed bumps. And then beyond that, everything is an upside. There is no downside. It's like, you know, a grumpy uh, customer brought back a broken product. Who cares? You smile at him or her, toss it in the trash. Next, next one is a sell, right? So who cares? I mean, as far as, you know, my trading goes, I like to see market doing what it is supposed to do when I take a trade. If it doesn't do it, I usually don't give it too much chance to go against me in a really, really big way. So for example, if I buy here, by bar 36, there is two legs down and the second one is a wedge testing here, double bottom. What is the expectation here, buying here or buying here, bar 37? You buy here for the market to go up. If it goes down, you might give it some room to go against you, but then you need that second leg. Now, if it doesn't and it then goes down and goes below these lows, then this trade is invalid at that point. You have to get out. Loss or win or break even doesn't matter. You have to get out. I think part of the problem with most traders is that they don't know what the expectation of their trades are. Exactly. Like if I buy here and you think you have heard from me that when I mask the chart and, and I I'm talking about the bars, I usually have a clear idea of, of what I want to see next. And if it doesn't happen, then I say, okay, the, then the probability is changed. Now here is support and resistance. You have to know that with whatever you are trading. If you are trading second legs, then the style of the second leg trading, if it is limit order or stop order trading, should be clear. And at that point, if the market doesn't do what it is expected to do, then you have to close that trade and get out. Before that clarity is in place, there is hope, okay? You have to switch these two. Hope goes away. What comes in place of it is clarity based on the math of trading. So you know the probabilities of things that you are trading and you know the three or four different nuances of that. So the first one is the expected outcome. The second one is the expected outcome, but wow, I didn't expect that. This is great. Okay. So it's a surprise in your direction. The third one is the failure scenario. And the fourth one is, oh my gosh, I didn't expect this to happen to me. So it's the surprise against you. You have to have at least I want to give you a number and my numbers are kind of not very good because I wanted to say you have to see like 100 charts for each one, which is the truth. But you have to at least see 20 or 30 different nuances of each one. So you have four for every concept. You have four outcomes. Expected outcome, expected outcome in a big way, failure, failure in a big way. Maybe the fifth one is a break even, but Break even is not really all that important. So four outcomes for every concept that you trade, you have to see in at least 20, 30, 40 charts for each one of those four outcomes. That means to take an idea and bring it to some executable um, semi algorithm, you need, uh, you have to look at like 200 charts, right? because there are four and you are looking at 20, 30 for each one, 120, 150, 200. That's for every concept that you trade. And if you want to add a layer of proficiency to it, you have to look at those many charts in all kinds of different markets as far as volatility goes. So we have low volatility markets, mid-range volatility and high volatility. So you take that 200, 150 to 200 examples for every concept, and multiply that by three. That's about close to 400 charts. So 400 examples of one concept that you trade. So do that and then look at the depth 
and breadth of insight that you have with that concept, whatever it is that you're trading. It's going to be beyond imagination right now, based on, you know, current knowledge. You do that for two or three or four things that you find very close to your personality. And uh, it's going to take some time, but you're going to come out the other end as a very knowledgeable person because there is nothing the market can do that you haven't seen at that point. So I think that's the best. That's what I did myself. If you look at my charts, I record every single day that I have traded. So this is not just to have a big folder of files. It's for studying them. So currently there are more than 2000 charts in this folder. Okay, these are the old ones, and these are the new ones. They look like this now. But I I really study this still to this day. And the way I do it is, so let me digress for a second because this is uh, this goes across the board for any profession you are in. I've studied art for about 15 years under two great mentors, and uh, both of them are highly internationally recognized artists. And both of them told me the same thing, and this is what they were doing. So one of them was, he's also an animator, and he said, he's also an art professor teaching at university. So he said, every new school year that starts and you have new cohort of students, I, I look at them and I notice that none of them are drawing anything on paper. But if you want to become a good artist, you have to have a small drawing pad that fits into your back pocket. And you are constantly drawing on it all your waking hours. When you go to the bathroom, when you are in the bus, when you are sitting in the doctor's waiting room, when you are at the burger store, doesn't matter. Every time that you are not doing anything else with your hand, there is pencil in the hand and you are drawing something on that path. Uh, this is the same thing because there is an art element to trading, which means trading cannot be completely uh, engineered, although we have done quite a lot of things with it with these algorithms, but there is a still an art part to it. And every time that you have something that has a lot of nuances, it becomes art-like, you need to have a lot of experience. And to generate that experience, you have to practice. And practicing for trading is looking at charts, not looking at them passively, but looking at, at them actively. You know, sensitivities that I have been trying to raise with you, with all of you, that look at the bars, look how far it went, look at the amount of pullback, look at the bar sizes, what happened to the gaps, how far did the market test back, what happened during the test, was it a vacuum test, was it controlled, how was it? To try to explain the energy of the market, as far as visual clues can tell you about it, because we are not looking at market breadth and volume and all that stuff, and they are not necessary. So what I did for myself was I bought a tablet early on with lots of memory, and I had all my charts and everything on that updated every day so that I can take it with me everywhere I went. And that included almost everywhere. You know, waiting for an oil change, I'm looking at charts. Actively. Actively means your mind starts to get tired after an hour or so of doing it. But then you also have to be athletic and push it. So I get tired after 15 minutes. Let's see if I can do it for 30 minutes. Let's see if I can do it for two hours. With lots of, you know, detailed practice like that, then it becomes effortless and your speed goes up and your active thinking goes down and look at the chart you see most of what's happening instantly so i suggest that you do it because that's the work that discretionary trading is asking you to do